Hi y'all, welcome back to the garden. I got out today, it's Sunday, did a little work outside. It's pretty chilly today, um, but I was able to get some prep done for the cutting rose garden, perennial and annual garden. I got the complete mound of soil cleaned up from having the geothermal installed last fall, which is so exciting. I was one of the projects that was just an eyesore back there that I needed to get up, so I'll spread some uh, grass seed probably in the next month or so. It's a little early. I don't want to spread it too soon and let it die. And I'm going to take you around and show you what else I got done. It wasn't a whole lot, but I did spend several hours outside. And I am excited about this season and how this property I'm going to be shoot videos in because the light as it sets in the west, it's protected by a tree line. And it's going to be really beautiful to shoot videos in in the golden hour this time of day. Before we do that, the thundercloud plum is blooming really nicely. Of course, nothing too significant or extravagant this year. It's first year. It's still kind of tiny, but one day when it's real big, it'll be really lovely. And the Royal, um, what's it called? Royal Star Magnolia has got some buds up here. Look at those fat buds right there. Uh, there's a one back there that's about to open right there. Uh, I don't know that it'll have a bunch of blooms on it this year since it was a little stressed out last year. There's lots of buds all over it, but I don't know that those are blooming buds. All of the Royal Star Magnolias in our area have already bloomed out, but if you're planting something new any year, it may differ a little slightly its first year on how it acts in the climate it's planted in. So. Take some things to settle in a good season before they bloom, maybe on time. And we've got some red bud blooms about to open too. Look at those gorgeous things. Let's make our way to the back. Look how much better this looks. I know um, it looks a little rough, but this is all my tractor work. Took a couple hours to smooth out nicely. Looks so much better than it did. I'll pop some before footage on the screen if you've not been here. Uh, watching for the past six months or so. Uh, we had geothermal installed in October and they had to dig, uh, I think we had six wells installed. Part of that was digging four foot below the frost line, obviously, or at least four foot uh, all the way down through here up to the house. And uh, they obviously had to mound up the soil because if they didn't, then when it rained over spring, and the soil settled would be left with big trenches. So I'd come out here about a month ago and kind of leveled it out a little bit, piled some more dirt back up because it had sunk a little bit, and but now it's looking good. So as part of what I was doing today, I've used up almost all of the wood chips from fall that I got. I'll take you back there and show you, but they're down there. And I started, a flower bed right here. I've got to come through and cover up this grass to die off. So as you know, this is going to be a wall of uh, roses from Heirloom Roses. Uh, I'll put the name of the rose on the screen. Really beautiful pink rose. Going to paint these pillars black uh, over the next coming weeks. And then I'm going to run some black coated, plastic coated wire down it to make like a long modern trellis. And then I'm going to plant a rose at the bottom of each post and in between each post. I think there's a total of 11. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, so 11 total roses. I went ahead and put some of the wood chips that I got dumped last week here. Um, I'm probably going to make this the flower bed and put some other perennials in here that accompany roses really well, but uh, this may be deeper in the future. I don't know, but right now we're just going to keep it simple and maybe do like a four foot because the focus right now is obviously the climbing roses on all of these posts and put these things to use. I think I've mentioned before, not sure why these posts are here. Uh, I think in originally maybe the barn, because this is truly a pole barn, was supposed to come out this way because they're inside the concrete, um, you can see there. But they may have decided to move it on over. Either way, it's a nice place. Maybe I'll get it covered in the future um, to be a little carport. It's on the north side, so it doesn't get a ton 
of sun, so I can't use it as like a greenhouse or anything, which I mentioned in other videos. Got a couple scoops out of this nice wood chips to make that bed over there. So still lots of to do. And I'm gonna be using that for the hydrangea hedge and the rest of the backyard primarily. I hope I'm able to get some more wood chips to finish off the cut flower space. I almost forgot to mention, um, if you, whoop, it's really windy today, today guys. Um, if you're following me on Instagram, you know, I said this weekend, uh, I picked up 36 Limelight Prime hydrangeas to go around the pool. And they are behind me. Look at these babies. These are five gallons, um, so they're going to be pretty big to begin with. They already have buds on them, so they're a little ahead. Not sure if they were in a high tunnel or anything where I got them from. Uh, because my limelights or my paniculatas hydrangeas here are not budded up yet. But you can see all of these buds on all of the plants here. Oh, it is so windy. It's starting to cool off as the sun goes down too. So 36 of these uh, limelight prime and these are already so big so I'm excited about how much progress they're going to uh, fill out this year. So Limelight Prime is an improvement on Limelight. It gets a little smaller potentially than Limelight, but the good thing about it is they turn pink a little earlier, um, whether you like that or not, and it may depend on your zone. So you, we see often, or I see often, people saying in the South particularly that their Limelights do not turn pink. Um, some of that may have to do with the humidity. It's much hotter down there, although it does get pretty hot here. Uh, it's hotter there for a longer period of time, and sometimes those limelights, instead of going from white, they well, start out green or like a limey color, go turn white and then turn pink, they'll go from white to brown uh, as they age. But uh, here in Ohio, southwest Ohio, I have found that the paniculatas transition pretty well to pink here. Um, we do see them burn probably their first couple years, depends on how much water you can get on them. Thing is with hydrangeas until they get settled in for a couple years, it probably doesn't matter how much water you can give them, they're probably going to burn um, their first couple years until they get more established and their roots settle in. So in front of the fence here on this side, so to position you, we're below the deck here near the pool. Uh, there are, how many, eight Limelight Prime hydrangeas planted right here on this side of the fence that I got from Proven Winners last year. And then I bought 36 more to go around the inside of the fence here. So I'll be working on that flower bed soon uh, and cleaning it up. I've got to go around and remove some soil from underneath the fence. Uh, the previous owner kind of let soil kind of pile up around the bottom down there. Uh, and it's not really great for the fence. It can cause rust and damage and all sorts of other issues. Outside of the fence needing painted and refinished, I need to take care of that pronto so I can get things done with this bed space. This flower bed also has, uh, you can't really see them right now, our grass is starting to grow pretty quickly, but there are little concrete border pieces in here just randomly. I think they might go all the way around, but I've got to come through and dig those up. Uh, here's a better view of them. Not really pretty, uh, and I'm not sure why they ended up getting covered by dirt. I don't know if this fence was here before the pool was here. Most likely it was, and maybe when they dug the pool, extra soil ended up just kind of covering these a little bit. Um, but I've got to come and redefine this edge and this bed, but I've got to remove those concrete things first, which is going to be an absolute pain. I don't like a whole lot of borders on my flower beds. Part of that is I'm frequently changing things and anything like heavy, permanent metal edging, plastic edging. Do not like plastic edging. I don't like metal edging here because our frost heave tends to push it out of the ground. Uh, I do love a stacked stone edge, and that may be something I add in the future to some beds. Um, in very many more years where I know beds are more established and I'm not going to be changing them that much. But I like a natural edge, pretty easy to upkeep with a string trimmer or a weed eater, and that's just my preference. 
So you can see how much mulch I have left here from the chip drop in the fall. Not a whole lot. It is so nice having a tractor and being able to do those projects quickly. I was able to do it just in a couple hours, uh, mainly because I had to travel pretty slowly over the distance to the cut flower garden. So I didn't get a ton of mulch in the yard. Um, I'd like to know whether y'all are cutting grass already here because we had such a warm spring uh, or a warm late winter. Now it's a, now it is officially spring. Um, the grass is already kind of getting a little long. So we're going to have to start cutting grass earlier than I usually do here. And our springs are always so windy and not the ideal to shoot videos in sometimes. So check it out. Uh, this is the original spot of the two 20 by 30 tarps. So I had a total of 40 by 60, this growing space here. And this space is gonna have some stuff in it later. It was put on last, and so the grass under here is not nearly uh, decomposed enough to start putting anything on. And those over there still need some time too. So when it starts warming up and getting warmer in the day, it'll be easier to transition um, or easier for these tarps to kill off the grass so we can transition to wood chips on top of it. But this makes me feel so much better and so much more progress getting ready for spring. It's this time of year, for better or for worse, my personality just puts me in panic mode. <laughs> I've got a lot of stuff to get done. Uh, in a month before it starts really heating up. I don't like to do a whole lot of work when it gets super hot. Gosh, this wind is awful. Um, and so getting projects like this done, I'm gonna come around with my edging machine and create a nice edge on it. Um, I want to do sit down, I'll probably do that next weekend. I need to sit down and spend a tire afternoon or a day coming through and edging everything. Um, and then I need to transition the edging machine over to the trenching adapter so I can dig irrigation. So I didn't want to transition it too soon and then just have to switch tools around again. I haven't read the instructions to see how difficult that process is. I think it's just removing a bolt, but you know how that works. So that's about it. Not a whole lot of anything exciting, uh, except other than checking things off the list uh, for me as we head into spring, I certainly feel a whole lot better about it and a lot more productive. So this week, maybe I can come through and finish off this rose bed right here. Uh, I'm thinking pairing like cat mat and stuff with that, something that doesn't need a whole lot of attention. Uh, and then I can start digging those concrete pieces. I think those are the tasks that may not take as long as I think they're gonna take, but they're not particularly enjoyable. Um, so, <laughs> Finding all of those little concrete pieces and getting them removed will be a pain. And then I can work on wrapping up those bits. When I have plants here to put in the ground is when I start getting a little panicky. That's why I'm so um, on top of trying to get things done by the end of April, because that's when my perennials arrive, my annuals arrive first week of May, and all of my roses from Heirloom Roses arrive. Um, at the end of April too. The last week of April, it's gonna be crazy. The fun time about this time of year too is a lot of things are on sale for spring. Um, so what I'm gonna be doing the next week or so also is um, I bought a bunch of hoses and hose reels from my favorite hose reel brand and I'll do a video on those at another time. But I'm gonna go find some wood post from the hardware store and concrete in several wood posts in the ground. So I'm adding, I think, four, two, three, yes, four hoses to areas like the cut flower garden that I'm growing. Those are not gonna be below the frost line. I don't need them to be. I'll have them blowed out with the irrigation system in the fall, which is something we have to do here in Ohio because it's so, it gets so cold and our frost line's so deep that if you don't blow out your irrigation, you risk pipes freezing and busting. So I will have the hoses or the irrigation blowed out or the hose pipe. I'm running two separate pipes, one for irrigation, one for hoses. I'll have them both blowed out in the fall. So I don't have to worry about any of that, but there's gonna be a hose here, right in the middle of this tarp to 
be able to water, hand water stuff if I need it. Uh, it's always nice to have one so I don't have to drag one from the house. Um, here available are just a wash off tools or supplemental water, which a lot of these things will need initially. Uh, but I am going to be putting uh, drip irrigation onto this entire cut flower garden so I won't have to worry about irrigating by hand a whole lot. All right, y'all, it is getting super windy and it's getting really cold because the sun's going down. So I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you guys for following along this evening. And remember, be a light. Take care. Bye.